How do you build in such a special place? With 80 acres of pristine wilderness stretching out before you, where do you even begin? This is a new project for me. It's on an island seven miles off the mid-coast of Maine. More than half of it is national park, preserved as wild forever. Year-round residents number less than 100. There's a one-room post office, a tiny school, a fire station, a store. This is a place where people still drive Model Ts. It feels like a frontier, a place that's on the edge, balanced between tides and storms, isolated and self-sufficient. To get here, you have to catch the mailboat from Stonington, and I grabbed the first one of the day. You share the 45-minute ride with contractors and tourists, framing lumber and sheetrock, provisions from the mainland, and you steam past the granite hauling derricks of Crotch Island, between tiny windswept islands and hidden ledges, countless lobster buoys, and you finally slip into the small leeward thoroughfare arriving at the town pier. And here, I'm met by my clients. We met at my studio last fall to discuss their project, and this summer, we're walking their parcel as we prepare the road access. We begin the tour on the island's only road, a 12-mile loop encircling the island. They've spent weeks hiking their land, in every season but winter, searching for the right spot to build, surveying the beaches and high heads, the drainages and heath barrens, the forests of fern. And they've narrowed it down to three candidate locations, each with their own set of challenges. And we're assessing each of those as possible building sites today and beginning our schematic design discussions. So the next few minutes of footage are a little bit shaky, but I wanted to include it because I think the insights here are really important. As we arrived at the first site, and just before I started to record, we had an interesting exchange about the simplicity and directness of the local architecture, and this notion of uniqueness came up. And I really wanted to get at the crux of this, not only because these are the kinds of things that can shape the design, but also because they tend to surface some of the things people really care about, things that are hard to articulate. What's existing here on the island? Do, any, anything that you like? Natural cedar siding, metal roof. Stone is everywhere. We don't have to use that in my mind's eye mm -hmm. anyway. Mm -hmm. uh, there is a lot of cedar siding out here, uh, and I have no problems with that. I don't think I like the cedar shingles so much because there's so much of it. Interesting. I like board and batten cedar. That would work. Or So uh, it needs to be different. needs to be a little different, yes. Uh, needs to be a little bit different. And from a shape standpoint too, a massing standpoint. Yes, I think so. Is shed, uh, is, is a shed roof different? I love a shed roof. That's interesting. So you don't associate that necessarily with the simple style here then, the shed? No, I think it is a little more unique. So okay. I would put that in a unique category okay. out here. Yes. Okay. A little. I think we see it very differently. It's unique because it is, if it is, but I don't need to have it stand out in that way. I don't, it's not a, it doesn't represent me. I don't have any firm ideas around, well, I don't necessarily want a tower. I don't, I didn't, that's sort of something I think you've toyed with a lot more than I have. I, you know, some of the things he's drawn or had, had seen were great, but I, um, it needs to be in harmony with where it is. And I do want some view, of course, you want to be able to look out and, you know, see things you like, but I don't think, I prefer almost, you know, I have to look that way and I'm not, I, it's all beautiful to yeah. me. Or we talked about, you know, there could even be structures divided, you know, they're separate. You know, we even talked about like having, you know, a sleeping space and then there's a space that sort of doubles as, you know, sleeping for us or our, our office slash guest and then the more communal space where we come together and everybody hangs out and yeah. you know, eat and clean up and all. Something that makes it unique is, I mean, just the, the journey to get here, like, it's, that's why I was asking you how long it took you to get here from your house. It's not easy to get here. Right. And then there's this process of coming here and disconnecting and exploring. Mm -hmm. That's something unique about this place. How does that express in this house? Is it about opening doors and closing things or is it about going to different sleeping spaces? There's a sleeping porch or there's, I don't know. I, it's all interesting to me sure. to think about that. Um, and, and to me, it's hard for me to come up with an architecture that competes with that view. My instinct is always just to defer to that because it feels like um, I don't have to do much here. And then it's about arrival and how the spaces feel and how they make you feel and um, how you live in it. Um, that's where the uniqueness comes. Because I think a lot of the 
local places, I mean, even the place you're staying in now, there's not a lot of thought about how you live in a place like that, right? Mm -hmm. It's kind of a function of mm -hmm. how the space was divided up. It's not a great place to to gather necessarily. I mean, I don't know, you can tell me different. No, you're right. I no, totally absolutely. understand what yeah. you're From here, we hiked to the second site, high on a promontory between a field of blowdowns and the open ocean. It proved far too exposed, and given everything we had just discussed, we quickly moved on to the final potential site, an area near a series of stepped granite seams falling away to the surf below, in the lee of a tiny island. This place felt different. And I know this may sound a little too much like alchemy, but when you're walking a site, you have to rely on all your senses to guide you to the right place. Intuition does play a role, and it's not a special skill. We all have it. Here we had the view, a cover of native vegetation, a natural clearing to the east in the water, a granite whale's back. All the diversity present on the property was right here. It also offered a shorter and more direct approach from the road for access. So we found a place to sit and sketch and to begin envisioning what we might do here. So when you enter, you enter to mudroom space here, you think? Mm, or I is think it mudroom laundry? I mean, you talked about... Which way do you want to talk mm. to that? Well, I love the idea of consolidation with regard to, you know, all that, but it's still the entries of the house, so I don't know. I kind of think that it just feels... But it's here. I mean, it could be that. I mean, it's here. I mean, it's... This outpost. Casual. I mean, is it yeah. yeah, it's not like we're trying to... You know. is the, so if the entry were, let's say the entry is this sort of strip where you come in, it's got coat yeah, pegs yeah, and stuff like that, that, and then happens. laundry is behind doors, like cubbies or, just, or whatever, yeah, can, is it... That's all comfortable for me. Yeah. That's comfortable for yeah, you? Yeah, I can do that. Does it still feel like entry, potentially? Like if you're, ent yeah, let's I'm say you're thinking. entering to that view kind of thing, like... Oh yeah, I even kind of like that, because I like the high function of it, and I think it could still be beautiful. Yeah. I'm not Laundry can be readily hidden with a sliding door. Yeah, some little Slurm door. Make it, make it can work. be out of the way. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Bifold, mm -hmm. trifold. Not doors. Some ugly doors but yeah. some, just <laughs> you don't like them. <laughs> yeah. Do you um, do you enter, drop your stuff? Like, do you want to be close to the kitchen? Does it matter? Do you, like, is kitchen right there? Um, it doesn't have to be the kitchen. Okay. But it. Yeah, it needs to. Um, I like dropping. You know, we have. This, a really small foyer that's been a sort of a we didn't quite think all that through and then there's because now we're like you know we're coming the front door the back door and we really didn't we thought we had that nailed down but it didn't work as, it hasn't worked as well we well, i think you like to have a place where you sit take your boots off if they're muddy that's uh, what i mean i do and we don't have quite what we thought we were going to have so that's something that i see now as we're talking about it's really important mm -hmm. and it's so it's a you know, it's a big turn time space. It's like the turnaround space where you, you transition. So, it's the yeah. So Eric, yeah. you can make that uh, foyer be a mudroom foyer, laundry room, totally cool. drop room, um, a lot of things, right? In one I mean, the mudroom is like the most you know uh, useful rooms, space yeah. in Maine, as far as I'm concerned. Especially, uh, I mean, you won't be here in the winter really, but you know, for the three seasons that you're here, it's going to sure. do a lot of work. And I, what else do you come in with? Bring like, your dog. I mean, so dog out. comes in. Yeah. So kayak paddles, they stay outside. Well, like yeah, rain gear. Stay in the yep, oh, yeah. Okay. Good. Yeah. Yep. I, I mean, I see a place for stuff. You know? Like sure. we have shelving at home. Just you know, people drop their shoes. Yep. Oh. What about um, like, what what do you see material-wise? Like, when you come into that kind of space, is it like the cocoa matting kind of thing? Is it metal grating? Is it stone tile? Is it Porcelain tile, is it wood? Do you care? Interesting. You... What's cocoa? Um, cocoa <laughs> mat, it's like, um, you know the door matting material? Yeah, it's sort of the brown, it's kind yeah. of short hair. I don't know if you remember in my house. It's, I have that throughout the whole mudroom. Um, you can recess it in the floor. Um, there's ways to make that feel like it's built in and custom. Um, then the, the porcelain tile is like an inexpensive stone tile. I don't mm -hmm. know if you've used right. that before. Yes. Um, bomb proof. Um, so five bucks a square foot, pretty, pretty affordable stone tile. I'm presuming you know what that is. And yeah, then yeah, wood yeah. is a little harder to do on an entry surface, but like just in terms of thinking about how you move from inside to outside, do you have any, any preconceptions about that? It, again, the function is the big piece there more than just aesthetics. But yep. So you know, like wooden, maybe wouldn't be the first choice necessarily, yep. but if we needed it to balance or it just came out, that was the best plan because I love wood. 
Um, Could you see wood for the rest of the like the living spaces? Is that sure. what you're picturing? Sure, it's warmer. Mm -hmm. Yep. Wow. What What about like wall surfaces, ceiling surfaces? <clears throat> like yeah, any any ideas on that? Like is this this isn't a knotty pine cabin? I'm presuming. No. no I yeah. don't like too much sheetrock. Sheetrock and yeah. maybe a little uh, galvalum or maybe a little um, uh, board and batten uh, uh, rough cut cedar. But more light rather than dark on yes. the side, right? You guys are yes. cooler tending warm. toward there. Yeah, yep. not quite so warm yep. as a okay. wood might. And the dining area, separate dining table, or is it like a nook? or what, like Have you I thought about that a, at all? You know, I, I know at home we have like, we have a, like a little, it's a kitchen area, just like this, you know, that's where the, all the, uh, the counters and everything is there. Okay. Then you've got like a, a tiny bar and then it's the dining area. Well, you have an island. That's well, that's the bar. Three, three or four feet by five feet, I think. Yeah. Or about four feet. And that hasn't really worked quite like we thought either. But it's, I'm okay with just, you know, it can all be together. You know, in other words, the, the kitchen work area doesn't have to be separated to any large extent from where you dine. It just, are you okay with that? Or would you rather have sure. it be no, no. Mm -hmm. more, you know, no, all contiguous is yeah. what you're... Yeah, it's fine to be... And do you have, like, a big farmhouse table that you do put... Like, is dining with, like, six people normal? Good or is it... Yeah. With this place. Six, probably. Six, Our yeah. current table is... Uh, we just plan for that, and we get people's space. Yeah, right. Okay, yeah. cool. Yeah. It kind of felt like a good... <laughs> yeah, yeah. And it's still small enough that we can, you know, feel like we're in this big... Yeah. So when you talked about the the living, I pictured the wood stove in the living, but you mentioned the wood stove might no, maybe in the bedroom. Too, I was oh, uh, I was suggesting that just if for the heating. bedroom is a separate structure altogether. Oh, gotcha. Having that as an option, sure, like, a, a little makes sense. I think there's room in this plan if we're talking about sort of splaying out two wings, that there's room to say the guests are over here and you guys are over here. I think there's room to do that if you're interested in that, and then and having two separate bathrooms I, you know i think having another bath like i think it just i think you're gonna okay. not regret that let's I, do it but i uh, you're right equally uh, i'm a little too practical right. you're feeling that now because you know everything is so much from my, but I, truly at home think about how it works what doesn't work sure i think if you look at the um the added cost of it it's, it's so minor sense, yeah. uh, based on what you get back right. from it. Well, I think then it's just... the guests get a very tiny little bathtub. And, yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah, well, a little shower, a shower no, is what I would propose. Yeah, or just a shower. Yeah, yeah. I think that works right. very um, I think that's a brilliant idea. Yeah, okay. As the day progressed, several themes emerged. Clean, crisp, minimal. Clean, crisp, modern, modern minimal, and organic. Organic. Uh, and the organic is literally like maybe you see rock oh, cut yeah. or rough hewn timber sure. or rough hewn um, timber stone good point irregular uh, shapes yeah Oof. maybe oh, man. but no everything is irregular around here so you you need some you need some hard line you, you, you need some that's hard that's very perceptive yeah. yeah so how do you build in this place well i think it's about doing as little as possible. It's hard not to feel protective of the very thing that's drawn people here, that solitude, a common ideal, stewardship of the land, a respect for the sea. This is an intimidating place, and I don't pretend to know what the right thing to do is just yet. We're calling this project The Outpost. It's a study in economy, of treading lightly, of deferring to this amazing landscape and a unique climate. It'll serve as a retreat, a place to welcome family, friends, and neighbors, afford their guests a way to experience this place in much the same way they have. I'm excited to share it here on the channel as the project unfolds, so do stay tuned. I have to keep, I have to keep asking questions until I get the answer I want. <laughs> You, you know that trick, right? <laughs> <laughs>